Yeah, it's your boy Chili here. Welcome back to Shared Memory in C++. Uh, in this video, I want to kind of introduce you guys to the Boost Interprocess Library that can be used for communicating over shared memory. It's very nice. It's, you know, it's platform independent. It's got a lot of amazing features in it. And then I want to introduce the core issue with using shared memory, the fly in the ointment. So this is a very important concept that I want to go over. Now, this is kind of continuing off of two separate branches of video series. So on the one hand, you have the shared memory, which, you know, this is going to go in the same playlist as the video that created this simple little program to communicate between two processes using shared memory. Um, but the code that we're going to use isn't directly from there. It's actually from a different series that I was doing and I was just exploring ideas of setting up solutions and using VC package to pull in dependencies and doing some uh, unit testing with multiple processes. So this is very useful framework that we can do our shared memory stuff in. And if I remember, I'll put a link in the description to the video that created all this code. But just to summarize, uh, we have a console app and we can communicate to this application using either command line parameters or via std in and std out. And I've got some tests in here and what I'm doing is I'm in these unit tests, each one of these, we launch a process from console app. We can give it some command line parameters and we hook it std in and std out to some stream objects that we can communicate over. Let's get started. What do we want to do? Well, first, I think let's just create a test case. Server writes just a single value, maybe a string into shared memory, and the client reads and verifies that it can find that value. So in the shared memory.h, we have a uh, abstract class for server and client. And let's also add a couple of functions to make a server and client object. Now, ideally, what I like to do is I like to insulate, you know, the console app and the tests from boost interprocess. So they're going to include this header, but it's not going to include boost interprocess stuff anywhere in here. We're just going to have these virtual interfaces. Let's make a function here in the interface. So virtual void write string, and in here let's do a read string. So here's our very basic interface. Now we're going to have the option to supply a SHM test case as an integer, and that will determine what code is running on main for the, uh, for the shared memory tests. Let's also add an option, std string code string. So this will be just a code string that um, unit testing code can pass to the process, and that process will use that to write to shared memory, and then we can verify by reading it. So in here we should include go to shared memory dot h. So if we have an SHM test case, let's check which one it is. If so, we convert our test case enumeration to an int, compare that with what was in the option line. We could do this with like a switch as well, but I don't like that because then you have to add the extra braces for this, adding the scope for each. Let's do it with a, it's an if else, doesn't matter. Um, so here's what we're gonna do for our logic. So we're going to do auto p server. We'll call make server to make the concrete implementation of that interface. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go p server write string star opt dot code string. So we're gonna write the code string into the shared memory. Then we're gonna go std cout. We're gonna give the test service the go ahead and say, okay, I've written to it, now you can verify. Just a little bit of synchronization here so we don't have a race condition. We're gonna read an ACK from the test process to make sure that it has finished its work. And once it has done that, this will block until it gets something in and then it will exit with a return code of zero. Now on the other side of things, we got basic read from server. So create the test process, 
console app. Now, the option that we want to pass in here is going to be shim test. And then the value that we're going to give that one, we'll do a std to string int. I believe we should probably include shared memory.h into here. Test cases, basic read from server. Let's do const auto code string is equal to something with but, but chug, but chung. There we go. Put a asterisk in there. Put a dollar sign at the end. But chung dollar sign. Second parameter that we're going to pass into here code string. Code string. There we go. So we got two parameters for the test. We hook up the yeah, the streams, and now we're ready to go. So what are we going to do? Auto. Well, first we should wait for the go-ahead because we want to wait for the process to actually run up and create the shared memory and write the string. So let's do... So we'll read from the buffer and we're going to assert r equal... Now, why did I make that? Just to make sure. But go ahead. So we'll make sure that we... The server has done its work and we are can ready to read and connect. So then we will go auto p client is equal to make client r equal. So we're going to expect it to be what we passed in, which is code string plus some sauce that the server is going to add. And the sauce will just be ip seed. I, ip seed. What we're testing that against is read string. Now, when that is done, we are going to write out our ACK, and then we are going to do our post amble, which is wait, and verify the exit code. So I believe that this is our basic test all coded up. Now, can we implement the shared memory? Here's the interesting part. So what do we do? We need boost interprocess. So the first step is to go into VC package here, add boost interprocess and then we're going to build. Now this is going to fail because you know we haven't implemented a bunch of stuff but it will in the process of failing install everything that we need so that we can include interprocess and get our IntelliSense and proceed with coding the implementation. So now if I go into here I should be able to include boost interprocess and let's go Windows shared memory. So this one is specific to Windows. It has some, you know, extra functionality, but it is not platform independent. That doesn't matter for me because I'm not, I'm only running this on Windows. If you're not running on Windows, you can probably change it to just normal shared memory and it'll work. All right, let's implement the server. So we're going to, um, let's start off here by creating some kind of aliases. So namespace bip is equal to boost interprocess. So we got our bip. And then we're going to call this one class bip server public <laughs> server. There. Okay, so we need to, the main thing here is going to be the constructor. That's where all the heavy lifting is going to be done. And of course we need what data there's going to be. So there's going to be a BIP, and I don't know what to, I'm, I'm, so I'm used to using managed shared memory, but that's, that's not, we're not going to start there. But now I got to do non-managed and I don't even know what the hell that is. So let's try Windows shared memory. Okay, seems fair enough. Um, so we'll just call this one shim. I don't think it's templated on anything. It is not. Okay. So that's probably all, maybe that is not all that we'll need. So this represents the shared memory object, but then you have to actually map that into your own process. And that's done with a different thing, mapped region. And we can initialize that right here. It's just always going to be initialized with our shared memory. And it is going to need read write. So the server will be able to read right from this thing. Now, why do you not like this? Error type. Ah, because 
they have sanitized their headers pretty well, so we need to actually include mapped region. There we go. Now we get the definition, now we can create it. Okay, so this actually takes care of that, except... So for the shim... I think we're gonna need some we're gonna need some sauce for it. The constructor takes a lot of options. So we'll do bip create only. Now the name of this one is going to be server segment name. So I just define a constant string in there, const expr, uh, and that'll be used from both ends. Now I wonder if we can just pass in the size while we're creating the damn thing. We can. We can pass in the size, probably. I don't know how much this is, probably a lot. Probably enough, if I had to guess. Okay, so it doesn't like this one, so this is probably not the correct constructor if you want to pass in a size. So I think we can probably do this if we just do bip read write. Creating, read write, read write, and your boy is all done. So we can do this, we don't even have to do anything. We might not even need, like, a constructor. So all we need to do then is just implement the right string. But I mean the, the beauty of this is I I didn't I didn't know any of these things. I just used IntelliSense and figured it out on the fly right here. I didn't have to look up any documentation or anything. So that's pretty that's a good indication of a decent design in my opinion. Now we need to write string to somewhere where the client can read it. So we're just gonna assume that these functions like write string they just start at the beginning of the memory segment. So, um, we go region, let me see what we got here, get address. All right, so we can get the address of the start of the region, I guess is what that is. Make my happy little alias there. So, this should be simple. All we need to do is do rn copy. So we're gonna copy from str to static cast car pointer and region dot get address and then make server couldn't be easier just return std make make a unique bip server boom done okay now for the client it does do the windows shared memory but this one is going to be open only name is the same still do read write you can't define the size. How about that? Still doesn't like it. No, it does like it. Okay. And then we do a, we map that, read, write, and that's done. Okay, so we don't need a constructor here either. Read string. So to read the string, we are going to get the address. And you're going to reinterpret that as a const car pointer. And we are going to return. Eh, let's just do std string s is equal to so this is actually returning a std string it's not taking in any parameters we are going to read in from helps if i spell that correctly read in from here construct it with a car pointer which it has no problem doing and then return s okay now why are you angry bip client public client Override doing some good work there. Um, logically, this is const. So, okay, and that seems to be that implemented. And there you go. And then make client again. Bada boom, bada beam. There you go. There's our implementation of our uh, shared memory client side, server side, separated into its own objects interfaces nicely cohesive in this static library that the console app and the tests can both depend on it does build all right so we go to our test explorer five tests we got process tests we got one shared memory test basic read from server moment of truth all right console app has called abort not great not the best Okay, I think um, this might be a little too big. <laughs> uh, this number is, what even is that number? Six, it's like so 736, let me just, I'm putting my thumb on the screen here. 
So this is four times. So this is megabytes. So this is I'm trying to create a shared memory that is 68 gigabytes large. So I might have gotten a little carried away. I think that was only supposed to be four zeros, not eight zeros. But there you have it. Um, so we're gonna build it with the new size, and then let's run that test again. Okay, so now it doesn't crash, which is better. Now we do get a, an assert failed, expected butt chug dollar sign IP'd, and actual butt chug dollar sign, because we didn't add the IP'd on the end as we, you know, specified the test to do. So what we should do, plus, now let's try this. All right, we're looking for greenies. Let's run all the tests, just for the fun of it. All right, so this one is stalling. I think we have a problem with our handshake here. So we write the go-ahead, then we gotta read an ACK, and then we exit. Is my ACK, is there a problem with my ACK? I might have not, I might not have put an endel in there. Yeah, okay. It's classic. Third time's a charm. There we go, and beautiful. Finish no problem. So, we have ironed out our wrinkles and we have basic read from server enabled. Now, next thing that we wanna do here is we wanna do like a sequence of reading and writing. Basically, we wanna sort of replicate what we have in here. In here. Yeah. 